Hello and welcome to Stand in the Gap. I'm Sam Rohr and I'm going to be joined again as usual by Pastor Isaac Crockett. On each of our programs, it's our goal to bring to you a leading cultural issue and then address that transcending problem, cause, and solution underlying that issue, but we do so from a biblical worldview perspective. Our identified major issue for today is the rise of socialism in America. Our premise is that divisions, controversies, and deception that we witness in the world and around us in America today are the result of our nation walking away from the only unifying and healing solution. That is a biblical worldview and a fear of God. Isaac and I and all of those who are a part of the American Pastors Network and Stand in the Gap Radio and TV, we know that no matter the enormity or the complexity of the controversy or the problem, applying the appropriate biblical principles of biblical truth will bring healing from division, clarity from confusion, and truth from deception. Healing and restoration in our individual lives, our families, and our nation can happen when we identify the problem, the root problem, then the cause, and then apply the biblical solution as God prescribes. Now the title for this week and the next week's program is Dethroning God in America, how it's being done. A very shocking and disturbing fact and that multiple studies in the past two years indicate that between 44 to 58 percent of millennials say that they favor socialism as an alternative form of governance to what we have in the United States, and specifically socialism in preference to capitalism. The voting habits of younger Americans in particular are shifting, and they're shifting toward bigger government programs and favoring candidates who promise what socialism offers but can never fulfill. Many nations have played around with socialism and have pulled the United States and the Western world into world wars because of the destruction that socialism always brings. So it prompts the fundamental question, how did we get to the place in the United States today where our younger Americans are seemingly embracing what we and our fathers and grandfathers fought and died to oppose? How could the godless atheistic ideology that drug America into two world wars become embedded into our American culture? And how could the institutions of learning, the media, and government, and the church become so silent and even become enablers of the very values that were once clearly opposed by our nation and opposite to a biblical worldview? How could such erosion have occurred and so dramatically affected our next generation, and all of this happened so seemingly so quickly. Well, we'll begin the discussion of this critical issue and answer these questions and more today on this program with a special guest, author, speaker, and founder and host of Worldview Weekend TV and Radio, Brannon Howes, who I'll introduce in just a couple of minutes. Our title again for today's program is Dethroning God in America, how it's being done. Well, Isaac, uh, I want to go to you right now for just a couple minutes. On this program, we've talked a lot about biblical worldview. We've had George Barna, researcher, on this program with us, and uh, we've talked about how remarkably the millennial generation and the generation Z, which is the underneath of them, the numbers are down to only two to three percent who actually hold a biblical worldview. And we've, we define that as there is God, there was a creation, there was a fall, and there's redemption. Let me just come and ask you, you're a millennial, um, if, if particularly the first two, there is God and there was a creation, if those two can be removed from our culture and our thought process in our nation, uh, what impact, how important are those two to the maintenance of freedom, our constitution as we know it, and uh, the ability, frankly, to uh, raise our families as, as we would feel God would have us to lead in our yeah. country. Yeah, very important. I mean, even our, our founding fathers throughout the papers, you know, have, have recognized God as the creator. And, and so when you kick that out, you get rid of rules and you get rid of right or, right or wrong and you, you have no absolute truth. And we see the results of that are, are devastating because who's, who's to make up the rules now? Um, and, and that kind of creates this vacuum, what we're talking about today. Yep. So you, you, in other words, would say 
God and creation are the foundation. Uh, and, and actually, Scripture talks about if the oh, yeah. foundations be destroyed. It's yeah, and our that, founding right? fathers even saw that as the foundation to any kind of rule or governance of people. We have to have that have to have that common belief um, in God's Creator and what He's done. And, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking today, and I hope that you stay with us. Uh, as we talk about the dethroning of God in America and how it's being done. It's in the context of the larger issue of the rise of socialism in America. We talk about biblical worldview, there is God, there was, a, there was creation, a fall, and then redemption. If you remove God and destroy the concept of Him creation, what happens? You ha what happens is what you see in America today. Now, when we come back, we're going to introduce our special guest, Brandon House. We're going to get right into the context of how this is actually being done in America today, the dethroning of God. Truth, flexible or permanent? The Bible, ancient history or powerfully relevant? Culture, a reflection of enlightenment or warning signs? The pastor, commentator or frontline combatant. Every day, American Pastors Network speaks to these questions where and when they matter. With hundreds of affiliate radio stations nationwide, a website and mobile app screening today's headlines through the twin lenses of the Bible and the Constitution. Educating, informing, equipping, this is the American Pastors Network. The time is now to stand in the gap for truth. Welcome back to Stand in the Gap today. And we're going to go immediately right now to our special guest of today, Brandon Howes. He's uh, on the screen joining me. Brandon, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Sam. Uh, Brandon, tell us just briefly, you have a sign up behind you, Sabotage the Movie. Uh, why don't you tell us about that just briefly, but take just a few moments. Tell us about the mission and the purpose for Worldview Weekend and then TV and radio and all the things that you're involved in, if you could please. Thank you. We started officially in February of 1993 with our first Worldview Weekend and held Worldview Weekend conferences and rallies in over 300 cities. Uh, over those years, over 25 years. And the goal is just to bring a biblical worldview to the area of law, science, economics, history, family, social issues, and education. And that, of course, includes things such as national security and, as I said, economics. So that's what we're part, part of what we're talking about today. Family, the break up the family, why it happens, why the, the communists uh, have desired to break up the family, what's the result of that. So we've just simply sought to help people understand the world in the big picture not just bits and pieces, but to put the puzzle together, uh, understand the big picture and connect the dots. Uh, Brandon, I think it's an excellent job, and that's what we try to do as well. Connecting the dots is what we say. That's what you're referring to. That's a lot of what people don't have. That's what we're trying to do today. Let me get right into this issue today. Uh, in your effort um, to make these things no connect the dots, and we're focusing on the rise of socialism in America on this program today, we mentioned that uh, between 2 and 3 percent of millennials hold a biblical worldview. You've talked about 58 percent, and those numbers are ranging, and the numbers, unfortunately, are growing. But within this context, let's go right to the heart of it. There was a group uh, back in 1933 and before called the Frankfurt School that played a big role in what we see happening today. Tell us about who they were and their purpose, if you could, please. Absolutely. So we have to ask ourselves, why is it that 58 percent of millennials want to live under some form of socialism? Well, that would largely go back to understanding and connecting the dots to the Frankfurt School, which came to America in 1933. Uh, the Frankfurt School was formed in Germany in 1923, and it was known as a Marxist Institute. And uh, when Hitler came to power, some of them being of Jewish descent decided it was time to get out of Germany. And they were brought here to America by John Dewey, the father of modern education. By the way, that's the same John Dewey that went to Russia in the 19, late 20s, about 1928, to study the Karl Marx way of education and then bring it back here to America. So he brings the Frankfurt School staff to America and drops them down at leading institutions, Brandeis, Berkeley, Princeton. And they had two goals to go, at, well, they had more than two goals, but they had the goal of going after two powerful institutions, education and media, education and media. And they knew if they could change the worldview of the American people, they could change their values. By changing their values, they could change their conduct. 
And so they came here to America. They couldn't call it uh, outright Marxism. They knew the American people would not accept outright socialism, the economic philosophy of Marx. So they said, we'll go about having a lasting revolution through a long or slow march through the institutions, changing the worldview and then the values of the people. Once we change their values, they'll naturally want socialism. So what they called it was cultural Marxism. In other words, we're going after the culture and what we do to the culture by destroying the existing morality of the culture, it will create such chaos, but it also will destroy the family, the incubator for passing on capitalism and a constitutional republic to the next generation. By doing all these things, they will want socialism. They will beg for it. And so they brought cultural Marxism to America. And I've been writing and speaking about this now for almost 25 years. You, you talk about four very influential leaders that were connected with that group. And uh, these four uh, thought leaders connected to the Frankfurt School, you've identified them as Karl Marx, Sigmund Freud, uh, Frederick Nietzsche, and George Hegel. Uh, could you maybe um, kind of help us work through those? We'll go kind of one at a time. But let's start with Karl Marx and, and look at what he added to the philosophy, to our culture, to our, uh, as you were talking about, I mean, it kind of starts with him and some of his philosophies. So what was uh, his goal and what were the elements of thought that were so uh, transformative from Karl Marx? Yes. Well, Karl Marx, I think, pretty much summed it up as the father of the Communist Manifesto. He wrote the Communist Manifesto in 1848. But the term social justice, which is everywhere today, was actually coined by a Jesuit priest by the name of Luigi Tapinelli in 1840. Uh, eight years later, here comes Karl Marx with the Communist Manifesto. And I think one sentence sums it all up. He said, quote, my object in life is to dethrone God and destroy capitalism. To dethrone God and destroy capitalism. And once you dethrone God, it's all over. You now, know how, you now have no definition for absolute truth, marriage, uh, economics, the purpose and function of government. Obviously, we're talking about uh, changing the gospel. Now you go to a social justice gospel, a cultural gospel. So dethrone God, destroy capitalism. That was the ultimate goal of Karl Marx, and we see that happening today, don't we? We absolutely do, uh, Brandon. And uh, let me just pick up on one thing before we go into Sigmund Freud. Uh, we're talking about worldview. You mentioned worldview. The Frankfurt School, you talked about worldview. Did they actually, from your studies, actually talk about worldview? Did they identify that? I mean, we use those words now and we use biblical worldview. Christians know what that should mean. But as you're talking about connecting the dots with what your mission is, uh, that we're really talking about worldview. And that's why I asked Isaac at the beginning, if you, if you take God out of the picture, and God created out of the picture, which are the first Genesis chapter 1, what are you left with? Well, expand on just briefly about their knowledge of worldview and were they, were this, was this group and Marx, did they have it thought out that well? The Frankfurt School certainly did, absolutely. They actually identified all the steps necessary to carry out and, and replace the Judeo-Christian worldview in America with their chosen worldview, uh, which include their four thought leaders, uh, which would include everything from secular humanism to uh, nihilism, the lo life has no ultimate meaning, their goal to destroy the family, to redefine the family. They openly wrote about their desire to destroy masculinity, fathers, the war on men today, and toxic masculinity. That doesn't shock me. I've been writing about that, speaking about that for nearly, again, 25 years related to the Frankfurt School. They openly said they were here to destroy the American male, replace a, a patriarchal society with a matriarchal society. Then they said, once we've destroyed the American male and masculinity, we'll then get rid of masculinity and femininity. So they said, we don't want any masculinity. We don't want any femininity. We want a general humanness. So when you come along with LGBTQ and, all, and fluid genders, that doesn't shock me. I've been writing about that for almost 25 years because the Frankfurt School said they're gonna, that's how they're going to do it. So yes, well, I could take you through the Frankfurt School and show you for law, science, economics, family. They knew exactly what they were doing to replace every area of those disciplines with their worldview, destroying that of the Judeo-Christian worldview. They knew exactly what they were doing. Ladies and gentlemen, I asked that question of Brandon just so it would be very clear for all of us because what we see happening around us today is not by accident. Mm. And if you understand what Brandon just said and what we talk about here so greatly, going after the masculinity of males, the femininity of women, 
the family, all of that is involved. This is what the devil has attempted to do from the beginning of time. You undermine the individual and his role in relationship to God, um, the man and the woman, and the relationship as husband and wife and children. You mess up God's construct, you end up with what we're seeing happening today. This is the devil's design from the beginning. We're identifying on this program right now just some specific people and thought leaders that have specifically targeted America and a biblical worldview. Now, Brent, let me go back right now into this second individual thought leader, Sigmund Freud, because if, Karl's Mar if Karl Marx's goal was to dethrone God and all that we're talking about, Sigmund Freud came in, and most people know him as the father of psychology, but uh, he played a, 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 a critical role as well. What was his contribution to this effort to dethrone God, and uh, just take us down the road a little bit on Sigmund Freud, if you can. Well, he was one of the four thought leaders that they followed. We have already identified Karl Marx, now Sigmund Freud, and as you rightly said, the father of psychology, which is very interesting because the word psyche comes from the word soul, and yet Sigmund Freud didn't believe in the spiritual world. He was a naturalist. He believes in naturalism only. You die, that's it, it's over. And yet they were supposedly going to study the soul. Well, that's the spiritual realm. But by soul, they would mean the self or your higher self. And so what Nietzsche openly stated was that the ones who were normal were those who were living out their natural inclinations to the lust of killing, cannibalism, and incest. I hope your listening friends understand that. Sigmund Freud was saying these are natural inclinations, the lust of killing, cannibalism, and incest. And he said the ones who have suppressed these natural inclinations are the people of faith, Christians. And as a result, they have gone crazy and they're neurotic. And this is it that you can see it in how they believe and how they act and their worldview shows they're crazy. So let me make sure again, your audience understands. Sigmund Freud was saying that the people that we would call crazy, the people we would call neurotic, psychopath, murderers, uh, they were the normal ones. The ones who are really crazy, are the Christians. Now, don't we see that going on today? The bad people are the capitalist free market people that create jobs, put capital at risk, entrepreneurs start jobs and give people jobs who believe in absolute truth, right and wrong, compassionate toward the sick, the infirm, the elderly, the disabled. We're really the crazy ones. The normal ones would be your Ted Bundy's and all of your other psychopaths, Jeffrey Dahmer's, etc. cetera. Uh, people who are promoting the idea of uh, uh, sex with children like Alfred Kinsey did and many others. These would be the normal people, the enlightened people. The crazy ones are the Christians. And yet the Bible says there'll become a time when good will be called evil and evil called good. And Sigmund Freud helped bring that in. And Brandon, uh, we have just another minute or two here. So let me just further this to just a little bit if I can. Um, the, clear, the clear impact of saying, all right, if we get rid of God, then we of necessity can get rid of God's rules for morality. Thou shalt not kill goes out the window. Thou shalt not covet goes out the window. Thou shalt not uh, commit uh, uh, adultery, fornication. What you just talked about, uh, we would call as believers a sexual perversion. A Freud would call it simply natural. So here again, we're back to the issue, the impact of removing God from the culture. So, uh, did, uh, you know, maybe in one minute if you have it here, did Freud have any real connection to Charles Darwin and evolutionary thought because they certainly seem to walk together? What do you know? Yeah, yeah, almost all of these guys were reading uh, Darwin and understanding Darwin. I mean, Adolf Hitler liked to study both Nietzsche and Darwin, and, and Nietzsche was one of the thought leaders of the Frankfurt School. So yes, many of these guys were studying each other, without a doubt. And I deal with that in a book I wrote over 10 years ago called Grave Influence, 21 Radicals and Their Worldviews Ruling America from the Grave. And what was so shocking when I did the research for that book was how many of these 21 radicals identified actually were reading each other. And so their worldviews were in large part built upon each other, without a doubt. And again, as we get into the next program, we'll talk about Nietzsche. And Nietzsche had this same concept as the rest of them with his hatred of Christians and used to sign his letters Frederick Nietzsche, the Antichrist, sometimes just the Antichrist. So the common theme with all of them was they openly, including Freud, including Nietzsche, including Marx, openly discussed their hatred of God and their hatred of Christians.
Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Stand in the Gap, and we're talking today our theme, Dethroning God in America, how it's being done. And we're drawing out how it's being done. It's been systematic, it's been clear, and it's been absolutely, totally demonic because it is a clear undermining of who God is, what He created, and what He has established for us. So, when we come back after this break, we're going to continue with uh, a little bit further discussion of Sigmund Freud and Marx and give some examples of how it's actually finding its way into our culture around us today. Stand in the Gap is produced and recorded in the studios of WBPH Philadelphia, positively different television. To watch archives of this program, go to WBPH.org. Welcome back to Stand in the Gap as we talk with our special guest, Brandon House. He is uh, the founder and host of Worldview Weekend uh, TV and radio. And we're talking about Worldview, of course, and uh, specifically how our culture here in America was targeted uh, almost a century ago uh, by a group, the Frankfurt School. And we're looking at some things that go even back further than a century. And we've been talking about a couple of key players, Karl Marx, and then we brought up Freud. And uh, you were talking about some of the concepts that Freud had that basically the, the baseness of our flesh, the Bible talks about the natural desires of natural man. And he said not only is that natural, but it's normal. And those who uh, allow the, the Holy Spirit, or, you know, have a moral uh, compass in them, that they are the ones who are insane, essentially. And so um, these, these uncontrolled passions, you said, were people's passions towards cannibalism, uh, murder, even incest. Um, how can, can you just maybe give us an example of how this kind of mentality lingers in our culture? It seems so far-fetched, but there are examples even in our current culture of how this is happening, maybe something in our government or education that we could see this, this from clearly. Absolutely, and I deal with this more in my movie, docu-movie, Sabotage, because it's subtitled how the Islamists and Marxists and their useful idiots are destroying America from within, and that's what we've done. We've done this to ourselves. And we, and this is exactly what the Islamists said they would do in their own document. They would get Americans to sabotage their own country by their own hand. And that's what we've done, whether it's the Islamist or the Marxist, who, by the way, are working together through a red-green axis to destroy us. And one way they're doing it is going after Christians, the Islamists and the Marxists. And they're setting up the Christians as being the people who cause all the trouble. The Frankfurt School openly stated, the source of all suffering and oppression is Christianity and capitalism. Now, is that not what we're hearing today? Again, I've been writing about this for nearly 25 years, and just people are now starting to use the term cultural Marxism. They said, the source of all suffering and oppression is Christianity and capitalism. Now, to prove that the Christians are the problem, they have to prove the Christians are crazy. And to do that, Freud, as you said, said the, normally, the, 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 the normal sane people are those who act out their natural inclinations to lust, cannibalism, and killing. Therefore, the Christians had suppressed those natural inclinations and gone crazy. Well, in the Obama administration, the Department of Homeland Security put out a document on what are potential terrorists, our potential extremists or terrorists. And who were they? Veterans, people concerned about national security, borders, immigration, and people interested in the pro-life issue, as well as people interested in end-time prophecy or Bible prophecy. Now, these were your potential terrorists. Now, this is continued on, by the way, in other documents we don't have time to get into. But Christians are being set up as the terrorists. Don't pay attention to the jihadis and the Islamist people really carrying out terrorism. The ones that are really the terrorists are Christians. And the Islamists and the Marxists are doing this because that's how they will destroy and marginalize their greatest opposition, biblical Christians. Thank you, Brandon. I tell you, we could go and spend a lot of time on that. But ladies and gentlemen, we have to break away from this program. This is part one that you are watching. We're talking about the dethroning of God in America, how it's being done. Uh, we want you to come back next week. We're going to continue on with our special guest. We're going to talk about the impacts of, of, uh, of, of Nietzsche and George Hegel and how he established the process. Now, 
If you're enjoying Stand in the Gap today, let us know. Go to the website that is there and let us know that you are watching this program, uh, that you are praying for us, and come alongside of us. Help us financially and in prayer. Important to continue to put this kind of news out across the country. Thanks for watching us today. Join us next week.